Let's begin, shall we? Elmo's, uh, he's been around the block a couple times, maybe a few more than a couple. <laughs> aye, aye. So, guys, listen up. Uh, it's all good. Got a President's Day weekend coming up. Doesn't really concern us, but if you go in somewhere, uh, you got Monday off. Uh, and um, enjoy. But before that, before any of that, we are going to do some uh, stuff with polygons, some stuff with tilings. We're going to see how different kind of polygons, different kind of regular polygons fit together. And so some of the stuff that I referenced last time, uh, I'm going to take more seriously today. I'm going to define regular polygon for for one thing and um yeah so it's going to be good we're going to do some uh uh calculations we're going to look at the, the problems that i asked you to look at uh we'll, we'll, we'll work them out in fact uh, that's probably what we'll do uh first r right after i define what a what a regular polygon is so i don't think i have to define what a polygon is. We kind of talked about that yesterday, I mean, day before yesterday. So as you remember, um, which I'm sure you do, uh, polygon was something that where we, we drew some line segments, maybe like this, and then we made sure that the uh, the seg line segments connect in what are called the vertices. So those corners, they're called vertices. Now, uh, this right here would be, let's see, how many vertices do we have? One, two, three, four, five. What do you call a five-sided polygon? It's got a special name. In fact, the number of vertices um, give you that name. Yep, pentagon. Now, if I say pentagon, this might not be what you're thinking about, right? Because a lot of us know the pentagon is the building that looks like more like this. Hold on, let me uh, let me draw that. Uh, so I'll do that over here. pretty much estimating here, but uh, this is about what it would look like. Okay, so what's the difference between this one on the top and the one on the bottom? They both have five sides. One, two, three, four, five. And five vertices, five sides. So they're both definitely pentagons. And, the one on um, the bottom is a regular. Um, Polygon. Yes. So this is what's called a regular pentagon. Um, and you could call the one on the top irregular. You know, we this is just a this is just any old pentagon, I guess. Um, but um, the regular ones get the special name because the regular polygons. Uh, regular polygon. I think here, here we go. Is a is a polygon that is. I'm going to call it equilateral. That means the sides are the same length, and it's also what's called equiangular. Equi equilateral means the sides are the same length. Equiangular means the, the vertex angles all have the same measure. Uh, so that is the deal there. So regular polygons are real uh, pleasant looking polygons in that they are, they have a symmetry to, to them. They have a, a kind of a harmonious look. Uh, if you look on page, I'm gonna show you also. Uh, let's see, where is it? 
This is at the end of the section 4.1. There's a, there's a cool picture. Like this. And that shows you, let me get the light just right. That shows you uh, what the different regular polygons look like when they have the same edge length. And you see the triangle in the middle, or in the, in the bottom in the middle? Uh, that's the equilateral triangle. Then you have a square around it, and a pentagon, and a hexagon, and so on. And this goes all the way to, I think, 24 size. And this is page 93. And um, you can see that the, the more edges you add, so the, the higher the n, um, the uh, more circular, circle-like the polygons become. So higher the n, the more circular the regular polygon looks. Already, when n is 5, uh, the, uh, the polygon is starting to look certainly more circular than the triangle. And then when you add more uh, more sides, like let's let's actually, if you look on um, our Blackboard page, you'll see the examples for and it's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you can see by by n equals eight. If you just go to the uh, home page for our Blackboard, I I posted the uh, uh, pictures for. Uh, the first six regular polygons. Now you might say, wait a minute, that's not, how could that be the first six? Because it starts with three. Remember, we talked about this? Uh, N has to be at least three when you're talking about the planar uh, figures. So these are the first six. Okay. And one of the other things that these uh, pentagons here, where they differ is that one of them is what's called convex and the other one is called non-convex or concave. Do you remember how that works? Can you did, I, did I mention did I mention this before? Maybe I didn't. So let me let me mention this now. Uh, this this guy here is this guy bottom uh, this guy on the bottom is is a convex polygon, and this guy on the top oops conf yeah there's no undo on this fortunately <laughs> so it, this is a very clumsy program for this kind of thing. Um, so what that means is there's some kind of movement to the inside. Like there's there's like a uh, some kind of caving in, uh, which the, the one at the bottom doesn't have. But there's no caving in anywhere, right? But here, there seems to be this kind of caving in uh, happening here in the middle and let me let me define that and this is also defined in the book but uh, there, there's a pretty nice way to look at it if there's a pair of points like these two so that when you connect them the line with the line the line that connects them lies at least partially outside of the figure. So if this happens, what, what I just drew, I, I drew, connected a pair of points with the line, and the line, that line that connects them is at least partially outside the figure, then that's what it means. That's one way to look at uh, a concave or non-convex figure. Now, as a contrast, there is no pair of points in this uh, bottom pentagon that 
where the line connecting the, the pair of points would be outside at all, right? You could you could place those points anywhere in the figure, and the line connecting them will always be completely contained within that uh, within that figure. So that's one way to define a non-convex polygon. Another way to define it or think about it would be that there is a, a vertex angle that's greater than 180 degrees. That's one way to think about it. So there's one or at least one, there could be many, uh, vertex angle that's greater than 180. So that's, that's another way. So if you have that, then you necessarily will have a non-convex polygon. All right. So that th those are some term, terms that uh, might come up. And uh, by the way, uh, when you study for the test, the midterm test, um, so these are the kind of terms that you you could write down in your note sheet. I, I don't think I mentioned that yet, but you'll be able to have some notes, okay? So you won't have to like try to um, you know just try to remember it all or or somehow cheat. You know this you can have you can define some terms and and draw pictures and such in your notes. All right. So, so what? Oh, yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about the homework problems. Um, I know that uh, these were troublesome for some people. So uh, let's quickly, fairly quickly, go over them. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Exercise five. That's where we begin. So exercise five. Wow, this is not, my setup is not designed for this. Um, so, okay, exercise five. Figure out the sum. Uh, so this is page seventeen. I'll uh, I'll put that up here. So page 17, uh, exercise five. Figure out the sum of the vertex angles in an arbitrary pentagon by dividing it up into triangles as we did for the quadrilateral. Okay, so I guess I should tell you what happens in the case of the quadrilateral. So first of all, if you have a quadrilateral, like a rectangle, and you divide it up into two triangles. I'll do that here. Then you can use this kind of picture to show that uh, the sum of all the vertex angles in a quadrilateral is the same as the sum of the vertex angles for two triangles. You've got this um, triangle here where these angles add up to 180. Okay, so th this is something that we're kind of taken as a what's called an axiom. We're, we're taking this as truth that one, tri one triangle's vertex angles add up to 180. We talked about that uh, last time. And we, or oh, was it even time before that? Maybe? Uh, so we uh, we can put two triangles together to make what's called a quadrilateral. That's it's a four-sided polygon. And notice now that the um, the sum of the vertex angles uh, of this quadrilateral. is going to be two times 180. 
this is something that um, I didn't assign, but you you know you could read in the section. So 180 plus y, which is 360. And this is a, a you know, on page 16 and 17 they talk about that. So what if you have uh, any old pentagon? So then what happens? So let me draw another pentagon here. And this may not be regular, but that's okay. Let's make it like this. Okay, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we have five sides. Now, do you guys have any idea on how to do this? Yes. Who was that? Who has an idea? Fiona. Oh, Fiona. Beautiful. I can fly. So, uh, yeah, you, yeah, we talked about this already, right? So how does this, uh, how would you show that a pentagon, just a generic pentagon, uh, how would you calculate the sum of its vertex angles? I can give it a shot. Do you want me to do it on the whiteboard? Yeah. Yes, okay. please draw draw on the thing that I. Okay. So would you go from here to here and then here to here because that makes triangles? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. And, and to, to check this out. So, so we're gonna have 180 from this triangle. We're gonna have 180 yeah. from that triangle, and 180 from that triangle, right? Yeah. And then you add them all up. You do. And then you Indeed. get them. So what do you what do you get? What, what's the uh, number? Um, you get five forty. Right. So thank you, Fiona. That's exactly how you you could think of it. So what we did, what she did just there was, she triangulated that polygon. She triangulated uh, that pentagon. Okay. Uh, thank you. Exercise six. Uh, did anyone go on Khan Academy? Yeah, so if, if you are having some trouble with some of the terms or whatever, Khan Academy is a wonderful resource. And uh, I, I would not discount that kind of thing at all. It's amazing. You could, you could do that stuff for free, and it is absolutely worth you know the 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever time you want to spend on there, you, you will pick things up. You know, if, if you're having trouble remembering how this this stuff works. Okay, so arbitrary means any old. Does that help? Any old pentagon? So just a random pentagon. Any pentagon that I might feel like drawing. Not a not a specific one, like this uh, this regular pentagon that I drew is a very specific one because that's the one that has equal angles and equal edge lengths. But the one that I drew here is an arbitrary one because what that means is any pentagon will have to follow that rule. So let me just draw an example. So an, an arbitrary, just a random uh, pentagon. So here I drew a random hexagon. So this, I should write here that this is uh, now exercise six. So we have a hexagon here. Let's check one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, so six vertices. And they want us to figure out the sum of all the vertex angles. So all the vertex angles added together. And uh, let me let me draw some stuff on here. So here's an angle. Here's an angle, and by angle, I mean vertex angle. Here's a vertex angle. Here's a vertex angle. Here's one, and here's another one. There are six of them, right? The six vertices, you got six vertex angles. So what we're trying to figure out now is the sum of all of those. Now, uh, did someone other than Fiona do this problem? 
or can you maybe show us now how you might approach it? Would it be with like a center point? Uh, center point. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, no. Uh, oh, I see. I see. No. See the um, when we triangulate anything, it's going to be from vertex to vertex, so not not the center point. So let me. I'm going to follow Fiona's example and. I'll draw these in purple. So we're going to do like this. So you can pick a vertex and basically draw the triangles coming out of that vertex. And I could pick any one, but the, the central ones make more sense. So let's see. Now I have one, two, three, four triangles. And if I write that up, so I have four triangles. Uh, so that would be 720 degrees. So let me count them again. Here's one triangle that happened or came about through this process. Here's another triangle, third triangle, fourth triangle. So let me just recount. One, when I have, when I'm looking at a triangle, uh, here, I'm going to draw a triangle up here. Okay, this is going to be a, a, like a silly question, kind of trivial. This is going to be a trivial question. How many triangles do I have here? How many triangles? It's 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 too simple. And that's why you're having trouble. One. Yes, Sonaya, perfect. It, 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 it's the silliest question of the night. There's one triangle in the triangle, right? What about the quadrilateral? When we triangulated that, how many triangles did you get? Or did we get? You can see it right there. Yes, two. So if those of you keeping count at home, when we had n equals three, we got one triangle. When n equals four, we got two triangles. When n equals five, how many triangles? n equals five, we get three triangles. n equals six, we got four triangles. And this is going to help us if you catch that. Three. And then every time you add one to both. So if n equals four, when you add a vertex, you add a triangle. Exactly. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe this uh, whiteboard clean, and then just keep that thought in in your head though. We're doing exercise seven. Uh, when we're Calculating the sum of the vertex angles in an arbitrary n-sided polygon. Wow, think about that for a second. We've only been doing this for a little while, and we're already getting kind of deep in with the language. We're talking about the sum of the vertex angles for an arbitrary n-sided polygon. Now, let me just, um, does anybody know this right off the bat? Let me do a little uh, summary here. So when n, so here's n, and here's um, number of triangles. That's not a hashtag triangle. <laughs> it definitely looks like it. It's number of triangles. So when n is 3, we had one triangle. When n is 4, this I'm just counting up what we just talked about or writing down what we just talked about. When we had a pentagon, we had three triangles. When we have any old hexagon, we had four triangles. So I'm just going to put like a dot, 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 
And so what if we have an n-sided polygon? How many triangles do you expect to get when you triangulate? Lorena, Sophia, I'm sure you have the same answer because that is the correct answer. Yeah. N minus two. You always have two less triangles than you have vertices. Great. So that, that's the answer to um, exercise seven. Okay. Moving on. Exercise eight. In exercise seven, you figure out a formula. So this is this is a formula for the sum of the angles of an n-sided polygon. A regular n-sided polygon will, of course, have n equal angles. See, all the almost all the polygons that we drew have different vertex angles, but in a regular polygon, you have equal, so they're all the same. Uh, so you have n equals angles. Give the formula for one vertex angle of a regular sided, a regular n sided polygon. Okay, let me let me just uh, write that down real quick. What we're after. So in exercise eight, uh, give the formula for one vertex angle of a regular. N sided polygon. So th there's a lot going on here. But keep in mind that we're talking about regular, which means that all the angles are the same. We're talking about N sided. So we're talking about the situation where we were down here. And then um, I guess those are the main, main terms or main things to think about. Um, it's the way I like to think about this is, um, you know, if I have n people and I want to give them the same amount of money, I want to be fair to everyone, and I want to give them the same amount of money. How do I do that? Like, let's say I have, I have ten people and and uh, I have hundred and fifty dollars. So, how much should each person get? This is just a, sim a simpler problem with actual numbers. If I have 150 bucks and I, I see 10 people who are struggling financially and I want to I want to give them the same amount of money to go get a sandwich or two, I want to give them all 15 bucks, right? How did you do that? You did 150, so the total amount divided by how many people? That's right. So that's the same principle that you're going to use here uh, when you're when you're coming up with this formula. Now, did somebody already come up with it? One vertex angle of a regular n-sided polygon. Nayeli, beautiful. That's exactly it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just write that down. So it's gonna be uh, n minus two times one eighty. That's this is gonna this is the sum of the vertex angles. So that's how much angle uh, that's how many degrees I have, right? That's kind of like my total money, how much I'm dividing amongst these angles of, of friends. And I have n friends. I have n angles, so they each get the same amount. Does that make sense? So you have n minus two triangles. Each of the triangles is 180 degrees. And you're going to divide that by n because you're distributing the angle, the, the degrees evenly. So that's it. So this thing here is going to be extremely helpful when we are uh, trying to fit these regular polygons together. And uh, you might think, man, why don't you just do it with the tes tessellation creator that you used last time? Yeah, we're going to do that too. We're going to use it to, to illustrate and maybe to check. But um, 
it's good to understand that there's there's a there are calculations behind the the degrees, and there's there's this is the reason why things will fit together. Basically, what we want is when we have some number of polygons oh, meeting at a vertex, uh, then what we're looking for is this one. Now, these are not the same kind of polygon, but we want the total sum of these vertex angles. We want that uh, to equal 360 degrees. That's when that happens. You know that those those polygons will will fit together at least around that one vertex. If it's less than 360, then there's going to be a gap. If it's more than 350, uh, 360, then that's that leads to an overlap, uh, and that's that's no good. Okay, there was one more homework um, problem, and um, that is number nine. If a polygon is regular and one of the vertex angles is 165 degrees, how many sides must it have? Wow. Okay. Let's talk about that here, over here. The polygon is regular. See, that, that's always crucial information. If a polygon is regular, we can assume a couple of things. And the most important here would be the, the angles are all, the vertex angles are all the same. And not only that, but we can use this formula to um, talk about a vertex angle. And so one of the vertex angles is 165 degrees. All right, so let me write this up. I'll try to write it up with the, the text tool here. So we know that N minus 2 times 180 divided by, this is the formula we came up with, divided by N. We know that that equals 165. So the question now is, what's N? So how would you do that? This is this, this looks an awful lot like a math problem, like a proper math problem, like like an actual algebra problem. Did anyone do this? Actually, I know some people did. So maybe some of those people who did would like to speak up and tell us how to solve it. Multiply n on both sides. Um, yes. Okay. Perfect. So let's get started. I'll, I'll be the scribe. Uh, yeah. We could also distribute first. Either way, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with the first, just because it came in first. And multiply. Right. Would you put the whole thing in parentheses, like on the left side, and then do N, or, yeah, I think. Wait, I don't, I'm now I'm confused myself. Never mind. Oh, no, no. You know, we're, we're, we're all for brainstorming and ideas and different approaches, but I bet your approach is going to be very similar. Um, so, and, and in some, you know, a lot of times it doesn't matter which step you do first. Uh, and with parentheses, a lot of times you're, you're um, you're helping yourself solve it, but they may not be necessary. So okay, so this n and this n will cancel, and that's that's the reason why we did this. Basically, I don't like the two-liner, the the fraction. I like things being on one line. You know, like I have an easier time getting around a, a ranch-style house than I I do a two-story house. I like ranch style 
Do we call it a ranch house? Rent no ranch style house. Um, so in this case we have then n minus two. A ranch style house is a one-story house. For those of you who may not know. <clears throat> so now we have n minus two times one eighty equals one sixty-five n or times n. And now what should I do? Somebody, uh, or Nayeli already uh, mentioned the distribution, so we, we should distribute. Would you do 180 to times negative two, yeah. and then 180? Yes. Is that we're gonna distribute uh, the 180 like that. So I, I'll, I'll type that out. So this will be One eighty N minus two times one eighty is uh, three hundred and sixty, and all of this equals one hundred and sixty-five N. Now this is looking a lot more doable, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the one hundred and sixty-five N to the left side and the negative three hundred and sixty to the right side. So uh, I'll just Maybe I'll just draw some arrows. Let's see how this works. So I'm going to put the 165 n to the left side. And you always change signs when you do that. And I'm going to take the 360 term and put that on the right side. So what do I have? I'll type it in. I'll type it out. 180 n minus 165 n equals 360. And then I'm going to combine 180 n and 165 n. So that's going to be 15 n equals 360. And just the uh, standard algebra trick, I'm going to divide both sides by 15. I'm sorry if this is uh, bringing back memories of a of a uh, unbearable algebra class. But believe me, we will not be doing a lot of algebra. This is just. I guess this is to illustrate that there is a uh, uh, there's an interplay in geometry and algebra. And and we do just a tiny bit of that. This this one time, and then maybe another time, like you know, weeks from now. So if I do 15 n divided by 15, the 15s cancel out, and what I end up with is just n on the left side. And what's 360 divided by uh, 15? What is 24. That? 24. Beautiful. So n equals 24 sides. Yay! Didn't take us that long, but this. So if I was to ever give you a problem like this, you would just follow the same exact process. So if I gave you a problem like number nine, like I might on a test, if a polygon is regular and one of the vertex angles is, and then blah blah blah, some some number, how many sides must it have? So really, all you would have to do is replace 165 by whatever number I give you, and then you work it up. OK. Wow, that was kind of uh, exciting. Uh, and really, more. this is more um, this kind of symbolic calculation that we'll probably do ever in this class again. But it's also good to know. You know, the math is connected like that. All righty. So now what? Uh, we're going to move on to. Uh, oh, oh, let me. Before I move on to the next section, let me talk about interior angles like uh, we have on this very page, page 18. Uh, so this, this will be quick. This is easy. 
the interior angle. And they only work for regular polygons because if the polygon is not regular, then uh, all bits are off. You know, because the, the angles are just not going to be the same. But if we can determine that the angles are going to be the same, then we can calculate their measure. So I'm going to draw this picture here. I'm trying to make a regular octagon. Octagon is the polygon that has eight sides. By the way, you should be comfortable with, let's say, up to 10. On page 17, you have the names of polygons. Um, they go up to 20. But if you remember up to 10, I mean, I think this is kind of good civic knowledge to have. Uh, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, and decagon. Decagon is a ten-sided polygon. That's good. That's good information. You you will hear those terms. Like for instance, uh, if somebody says, "Hey, uh, in this town, the stop signs are you know, regular octagons, but in this uh, in this town, the stop signs are regular decagons." What's the deal? Why would they do that? You should know what they mean. And now you do. Uh, so in this town or in this country, uh, all stop signs are regular octagons, by the way. And what this idea of the interior angle means, interior angle, is that if you mark the center of the um, polygon and then connect The set that center to two adjacent vertices, then although it looks kind of like a, a, a cheap version of Pac Man, what we're interested in here is the size of the mouth or the opening of the Pac Man. Uh, so, this, this here is uh, what's called the interior. And notice that it doesn't matter which two vertices I pick. I mean, they have to be side by side, so adjacent, right? But I could have picked, uh, I could have put these two over here, or these two in the bottom, or whatever. This interior angle should be, or will be the same as long as the polygon is regular. And it's actually very easy to calculate because in general. Uh, the the formula is 360 degrees divided by n because there are n vertices and there are n this is kind of like the pizza right this look is this this octagon is, is you think of it as a pizza that you cut into eight slices right Are, is there anyone here that's from a place where they cut the pizza to uh, something other than eight slices? So New Yorkers need not reply. New York pizzas always cut to eight slices. If they cut it to any number, any other number, don't buy it. It's it's not New York pizza. There's but definitely there any... square pizza where I am, which is just disappointing. Where, where are you from? South Carolina. They uh, like Domino's, like fast food pizza. It um, you can order it in square slices. Man, I think that's this. There's probably a, a blasphemy cause. We could <laughs> it, we could apply. It's disappointing because then you also don't have a crust on like the middle pieces. It's just like tea. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, Sicilian. Yeah, no, I get that. I I understand. 
but um, it's uh, yeah, it's a different story. It's almost like, do you call it pizza? But yes, of course, you call it pizza. Uh, I've I've been to uh, well, I have, I have a funny. To, uh, oh, please. So I'm actually Brazilian, and in Brazil we eat pizza with fork and knife. No judgment. <laughs> so our pizza slices are <laughs> actually little, very. Laugh, <laughs> Not judging, just laughing. My mom does the same thing. <laughs> She's from Costa Rica, and she always eats it with a fork and knife. It's so weird. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, hey, this is this is even worse. My um, friends, when when I go to Finland. Uh, my friends, especially the older ones, will eat hamburgers with fork and knife. So there's that. Uh, pizza, I, you know, I kind of get. Like, depends how it's made. Like, if it's real sloppy, you might want to maybe cut first a couple bites with the fork and knife and then eat the rest with hand or something like that. But hamburger, really? But I've, I've gotten over it, you know, just... It's different. Yeah. But no matter how you cut it, no matter, no matter how you slice it, uh, the interior angle of a pizza slice is that sharp angle. Okay? So what, what would be the measurement when you have eight slices? What would the sharp angle be? What, what should it be? If it's cut evenly, if it's cut right, it should be, let's see, 360. Divide it by N, which is, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I wish I had an undo. Uh, let, me, let me try it again. 360 divided by and the actual number is eight, right? So what did that sharp angle come out to be? 45, exactly, 45 degrees. And so that's the interior angle for a regular octagon. Now, if you had a decagon, 360 by 10, so that would be six. Right. Now, this also leads me to a, a little practical trick. If you are at a pizza place and you're not quite sure giving you a big slice for your $3 or where it is now, $4, what you could do is this. You could take a piece of paper and you, you, you fold it in half like this. Okay, so I just made myself a 45 degree angle. Then you can place it on the pizza. Don't touch it. They don't like you touching it. But you can just place it and you say, wait a minute. That interior angle is definitely less than 45. I should get a discount. Sell it to me for a quarter less. And then well, you'll, see, you'll see what they say. They're probably going to say, get out of here. Forget about it. No pizza for you. But I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that is one way of checking if you get, you know, if you get your money's worth. So anyway, so that's the interior angle. And uh, let's let's go ahead and uh, shift gears a little bit. Uh, we're gonna talk about regular tilings now. So. Um, let me type that up here. Regular tilings. And uh, first of all, tiling is a covering of a surface without leaving any gaps or overlaps. So that's that's the first thing. So we 
we're covering a plane. We're uh, or plane. You know, we're, in this class, we're talking about planes, but you could theoretically have other surfaces as well, like like the sphere, or some some other places, or some other uh, kind of in a different universe, a different system. Uh, but in any case, tiling is a covering of a surface. And with us, it's a plane. And um, we don't want to leave any gaps or overlaps. So we want all of it to be covered and none of it to be covered twice. So we want all of it to be covered just once. And thing is, it doesn't actually have to be uh, done with polygons, not at all. Uh, in fact, uh, if you go to a desert, let's say, uh, then you can uh, come away with something like um, something like this. Okay, doesn't want to. I'll I'll do a little uh, screen capture here. So. I'm going to show you an example of a tiling. And I have to do it a little differently. So this, this is a, um, Do it now. This is not good. Uh, uh, so I, I just took a screenshot of something. One thing is I'm, I'm still a little bit getting used to the, the Apple world because I I was a PC guy forever and just just this latest computer that I have is is Apple and uh, sometimes things go where I don't expect them to go uh, okay OK, so here. So this thing right here is a tiling. Notice that it's just uh, these random, they're not polygons because they're not made of uh, uh, straight line segments. But they are these random shapes. and. It covers the plane. It doesn't leave any gaps or overlaps. And so this would qualify as a tiling. You see? So there, there isn't like, it's not all mathematical or somehow symmetric or balanced or anything else. Uh, it's It could be different things. So a tiling just at the outset is not necessarily a, some kind of mathematical uh, uh, concept. And so, whoops. So let me go back to my, okay, so I wiped it up. So the tiling is just a covering and a regular tiling then, a regular tiling is a tiling that is called edge to edge and I'll show you what that means in just a little bit edge to edge and it is 
made up of only one type of regular polygon. So let's unpack this definition here. So a regular tiling, first of all, is a tiling. Then it's edge to edge. And what does that mean? It means that when you have uh, let's say here's a, you know here's a tile, then the next tile would be like this, right? So this edge is a shared edge. Okay, so this would be a shared edge, and every edge would have to be a shared edge. Now, what's not edge to edge? Check this out, and this this is going to look familiar because you see this kind of tiling a lot. What does this look like? It's not very well drawn, but this is supposed to be a, like a brick wall. Yeah. So brick wall, I, I think this is a great example of a tiling that is not edge to edge. They don't share the same edges, right? That any edge like, um, like this one here, it's actually just the edge for the for the one brick because the bricks underneath they don't share that they just don't meet edge to edge. So in 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 a sense the the term edge to edge is pretty self-explanatory, but it's good to see some examples. Okay, so regular tiling is a tiling that's edge to edge. And it's made up of only one type of regular polygon. So wait a minute. Um, what were the regular polygons again? We had the triangle. This is when n equals 3. We had the square. We have the Oops, the regular pentagon. Not very regular looking, but anyway, you get the point. We have, oops, oh man, I am all over the place with these lines. But anyway, this is supposed to be the regular hexagon. Oh my God, it's embarrassing. But uh, you get the point. So these are some of the first, these are the four smallest uh, regular polygons. And um, we could try to draw the regular uh, tilings with these. And to avoid any further embarrassment with my um, hand drawing skills, uh, I'm going to go to this tessellation creator that I have um, already opened. There's a link to this in our Blackboard page. Notice that what I drew really is the first four of these uh, tiles. Notice all, all of these tiles have the same edge length. They don't, it actually doesn't look like. If you look at the 12-sided one, it just comes out a lot bigger, but it, it does share the edge length with all of the others. Okay, so you could you could you know put in any of these like where you can put it in. In fact, then it might be an overlap. Okay, but this set really fit. And this this program is nice because you that actually helps you uh, line up the edges like that. But so let me show you now we can 
make this regular tiling so four smallest ones three four five six and probably you can make a tiling equilateral triangle uh, Making them different. I'm just making them different color, I guess. In fact, with this program, you can you can also make um, you can change the colors after, like this, right? Okay, so this is this would be the tiling made up of equilateral triangles. Now it's got some funky colors, but in any case you have, how many triangles do you have meeting at a vertex? Anybody? Three, right? Uh, I, I I was thinking maybe I shouldn't leave these negative spaces because you're gonna not take them. No, yeah, I'm I'm thinking of those white spaces also being you know triangles. Can I call them equal? Like all colors are equal. White is equal to green and purple and brown. So when I'm when I'm in this. Um, uh, when I'm in uh, at any any vertex, I can't really draw on this. I I don't think so. But um, I'm afraid to waste any more time with the with the screenshots. Um, but in each vertex, if you look at like, do you see my little um, pointer now? If you look at that spot circle you have six triangles around it the brown one at the top and then you can count them brown white purple or pink brown white pink white green white one two three four five six so you have six identical triangles around that point Okay, now why does that work? It it seems to line up really, really nicely, and I didn't have to do any fudging around, right? They they just the triangles just easily kind of just fall into place. It's because each triangle has a vertex angle of sixty, one hundred eighty degrees divided by three. Remember, some of the vertex angles for a triangle is 180. And if, if it's a regular triangle, equiangular, then you can just divide by 3 to get the measure of one angle. 180 by 3 is 60. And 60 times 6 is 300. So it together, these six triangles add up to... 360 around this one vertex. That's why they fit together so well. So let's see. Can I can I do a similar thing with the squares? Sure. Yeah, I can do that. I can definitely do that. This is easy. These these guys line up like they already know what's going on. Right? Each vertex here has one, two, three, four triangles around it. I mean, I'm sorry, four squares around it. One, two, three, four. And it it works so well because four times one vertex angle, which is the, the right angle, which is 90, four times 90 is 360, right? Four times right. It's not just right. It's four times right. Now, what about the five? Let's uh, let's pull out the five. 
Uh, that that kind of seems a little different already. Let me uh, see if I could line that up. Line that up. That's easy. Oh, wait. Uh, hmm. See, if I put this last one in here, it, it just it does more than cover the gap. It, it becomes an overlap. So if I'm looking at this vertex, uh, gee, um, so I've got three pentagons. Let me, let me go into my math page here and ask myself and you guys, can I tile the plane with regular pentagons? So let's start with what is the vertex angle of a regular pentagon? Uh, I'm going to put it in that formula. What is it? 180 times n minus 2. So it'd be 5 minus 2. divided by 5. And when you do that math, you get 180, divide, uh, 180 times 3, which is um, 540. Divided by 5. So it's 108. So the vertex angles of vertex angle of 1 pentagon is 108. So if I put in 3 of the pentagons, I come out with 324 degrees, which is it's not enough. That, that's why we saw the gap. If I try to fit 4 in there, then that goes over. Let's see, 432. So 324 is too little. 432 is too much. I just can't hit the 360. So, so the answer is no. Uh, there is no, I'm going to say, integer multiple. of 108, um, that is 360, uh, let's say comes out the, comes, comes out the 360. Three is too little, four is too much. So basically what this means is you cannot tile the plane with regular pentagons. So we, we did it with three-sided things. We did it with four-sided things. Five was a ah, But what about the six? Let me try that. Uh, and then this will probably be the last thing we'll do today. So if I do the six, oh yeah, this, this, this is meant to be. These come together so, so easily and nicely and it just comes up to a familiar, you know, nice shape immediately. Nothing weird about this. This is the, this is that honeycomb pattern that we uh, talked about earlier. If I wanted to go a little different with colors, of course, this has nothing to do with the math, but I just can't help myself. If I have a chance to color, I usually do it. Okay. So anyway, so why does this work? It works because each vertex angle, actually, let's calculate that real quick. Uh, 
the vertex angle of a regular hexagon. Maybe somebody could help me. Regular tiling with hexagons. It works. Because each vertex angle is, let's see, where's that formula? 180, 6 minus 2, divided by 6. So let's see, that's 7, 20. 6, times, uh, six minus 2 is 4. 180 times 4 is 720. And <laughs> that zero looks funky. Uh, 720 divided by 6 is 120. 120 degrees. And 120 degrees times 3 works out because um, check this out so let me just change color so if that is 120 and this is 120 and then this one is 120 120 times 3 of course is 360 so they fit together around that vertex so beautifully and that is the last of what we call the regular tilings. And give this a name. This tiling, that's a that's a hexagon, that's a hexagon, that's a hexagon. So when when I go to name these tilings, I just start somewhere and I, I kind of go around and I uh, they they regroup clockwise, I go around and kind of collect all of the numbers of the of the uh, types of hexagon uh, type of polygons that you have. So this one has a six sided, a six sided, and a six sided. So we would call this, so this is the naming convention. We call it the six 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 title. It's okay. You can say it out loud. It's you know it's it's fine. I'm talking math here. Six six six. So what about the other ones? What would they be called? If I'm going to try to do a quick version of the square tiling here. So with that naming convention, this one would then be. The four 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 tiling because I have square here, square here, square here, and square here. These are all fours. So th this is the the way we're going to name these. Okay, just pick a vertex and go around it picking up every number of edges that the polygon has. So that's a four, that's a four, that's a four. That's a four. Now, it, it, it seems a little silly when they're all the same. Like, why are you even doing it like that? There's just four squares meeting at a vertex. That's it. So four, 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 four. Here's six, 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 uh, six, six, six. And in that, remember the triangle, triangles? That would be a... Three, 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 because there were six triangles meeting in the vertex. Now, it gets a little more interesting when we get to the what I call semi-regular tilings, and we'll just have to do that next time. Uh, I think this is probably enough for now, and um, I'm gonna give you. Um,
a little bit of uh, reading to do uh, for next time. And let, let's do it like this, actually, because um, I have to kind of, I have to think a little bit. I didn't, um, I thought we were going to get a little further along than we did. But it's basically going to be from uh, section 4.1. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you the exact pages. And I can even take pictures of the pages for now, since uh, I know some of you may not still have the book. Uh, but just uh, check Blackboard um, later tonight. And I'm going to put the homework up there. It, it, it's it's going to be reading and some problems. Um, I don't really have enough to give you a project. I'll, I'll do that uh, next week. But are there any questions? I know that was kind of loaded here in the end. Any questions at all? Elmo, you have any questions? No? OK, then. Elmo lost the weekend. Yay! It's time. All right. I'll see you later then. Bye, Professor. Thank Have a good weekend. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.